thanks for taking part in this brief Bible dive with beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, and with me, Pastor Nick. During these brief Bible dives, we take a brief but deep dive under the surface of a Bible story, try to bring up a precious pearl or two and see how we can apply them to our daily lives. We never try to cover the entire story, just simply find a couple things uh, that we find fascinating and that can help us for our spiritual growth and relationship with God and our neighbors. Also, it would be great if you could subscribe to our YouTube channel, select to receive notifications, uh, and, and like this video, maybe share it with somebody who you think would benefit from hearing it. This brief Bible dive is going to focus on Acts chapter 16, verses 16 through 24. And as we hear the story and discuss it, let's ask ourselves the following question. How, or I'm sorry, when, when have I felt a power that makes it difficult for me to pray and experience the presence of God? When have I felt a power that makes it difficult for me to pray and experience the power of God? We're using the New Revised Standard Version, the NRSV. That's what we tend to use here at Beautiful Savior. And uh, here's the story as we hear it from the book of Acts. One day, as we were going to the place of prayer, we met a slave girl who had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. When she followed Paul and us, she would cry out, These men are slaves of the Most High God who proclaim to you a way of salvation. She kept doing this for many days. But Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. But when her owners saw that their hope of making money was gone, they seized Paul and Silas and dragged them into the marketplace before the authorities. When they had brought them before the magistrates, they said, These men are disturbing our city. They are Jews and are advocating customs that are not lawful for us as Romans to adopt or observe. The crowd joined in, attacking them, and the magistrates had them stripped of their clothing and ordered them to be beaten with rods. After they had given them a severe flogging, they threw them into prison and ordered the jailer to keep them securely. Following these instructions, he put them in the innermost cell and fastened their feet in the stocks. Now, the story involves Paul and Silas and, and apparently a few others, including the narrator, who we presume is Luke. Uh, it involves Paul and Silas preaching in the area around Philippi, uh, where Philippians, the New Testament letter that Paul wrote to the church in Philippi, would eventually be sent. And as they were going around doing God's work in this area, the story tells us that a slave girl was following them around and harassing them. So, so let's get into what was spiritually possessing this slave girl, how Paul freed her in the name of Jesus, and how we might find freedom from a similar spiritual oppression or opposition. Beginning with the evil spirit, in English, we just heard in verse 16 that the slave girl had a spirit of divination and brought her owners a great deal of money by fortune telling. But what was the spirit and how did it work, or type of spirit, I should say? In the original Greek version of the book of Acts, we read that the girl was possessed by a pneuma pythonos. Pneuma pythonos. Now, often in English translations of the Bible, we read these oversimplified explanations that someone had a, an unclean spirit or an evil spirit or was possessed or some other generalized term. But, but there is nothing general or generalized about a, a Pythian spirit, a pneuma pythonos, um, you know, again, in Greek. Uh, those words describe a very specific thing and would have been known immediately to most of those who read or heard the book of Acts for the first time in the early church. A Pythian spirit is an evil spirit that attacks uh, or attempts to attack or block a person's ability to breathe spiritually, to breathe in spiritual life. Now, this correlates with what we hear in this story, that the Pythian spirit in the slave girl was, was getting in the way of Paul and Silas as they were heading to the place of prayer, a place where they could spiritually breathe and feel the Holy Spirit in their lives. It was agitating them and annoying them and bothering them as they were doing the work of God 
doing the work of the Holy Spirit. We remember that the Greek word pneuma means spirit as well as breath. Uh, and so pneuma pythonos, the Pythian spirit, attempts to block and constrict the work and experience of the pneuma hagion, which is the Greek term for the Holy Spirit. Pneuma pythonos, Pythian spirit, pneuma hagion, the Holy Spirit. And when we consider it, you know, let's consider an animal that's, that has this related etymology in English. When we do that, it beco this becomes even more vivid what's happening here. The word python has a connection with this word pythia or pythian. A python, a type of snake, wraps itself around its victim. And then, the, and then as the victim exhales, even just a little bit, the python tightens its grip and makes it harder and harder and harder for the victim to inhale more. And this continues until the victim is completely out of breath and passes out to usually what would be a physical death. And then the idea behind the Pythian spirit is that it wraps itself around a person spiritually and over time makes it difficult for the person to spiritually breathe in the life-giving Holy Spirit of God. It tries to force out spiritual breath and then therefore lead to a spiritual death. Looking at more at this word and all of it historically, in the ancient classical word, a Pythia, P-Y-T-H-I-A, a Pythia, was a priestess at the Temple of Apollo at Delphi. Uh, you might have also heard this as the Oracle at Delphi, uh, because before, but before the place was known as Delphi, it was known in Greek as Putho. The name Putho comes from the Greek word Puthein, which means to rot. Not a great sounding thing to think about, but but why did it use that word? Well, it was named um, it was named this after a really strange sort of rotten but sweet smell that came from fumes that emanated from rock chasms in the area. It was here at Putho, or later Delphi, that in Greek mythology, the god Apollo killed this great dragon or python that was in the earth. And so people believed the bizarre smell or vapors were either fumes from the dragon's nose or a smell of its rotting flesh. And so a place of worship was then built, uh, dedicated to Apollo, was then built above these fume-producing rock chasms. And a priestess called a Pythia acted as an oracle who would go into a chamber uh, just filled with these fumes and connected to a chasm that produced these fumes. And then the oracle would go into this ecstatic, hallucinatory state sometimes even convulsing as she, and it was always a she, uh, as she would deliver this message from the gods, which sometimes was intelligible, but sometimes unintelligible, which would require a male priest's interpretation as, as he would write down what she was saying. You know, if you ever read that ancient work, Oedipus Rex, it was at the Oracle of Delphi, um, it was the Oracle of Delphi, sorry, um, who foretold that Oedipus would, would kill his father and wind up marrying his mother. See, so it was understood that the Oracle, the Pythia, would be able to, to, to see the past, experience the present, experience and see the future, even all at the same time in this hallucinatory state. So this Pythia, this Oracle, was essentially a fortune teller was essentially someone who practiced divination. So bringing this back to our book of, uh, you know, our story in Acts, uh, with our story in Acts, we can see how the original readers or hearers of this book would have understood, would have, uh, they would have understood the Pythian spirit to be enabling the, sl the slave girl to be a fortune teller, one who was doing divination. And they would have understood how her owners then would have been able to abuse her by gaining profit from this ability. Of course, little did these owners expect, however, for Paul and Silas, followers of the real living God working in the name of Jesus, who were empowered by the Holy Spirit and not a Pythian spirit, to be in this area. Little did they expect that they'd be in this area and that they'd cast this Pythian spirit out of the slave girl for doing exactly what it was intending to do. And what was that? 
it was trying to distract or bother or generally annoy to constrict Paul and Silas as they did the work of God. It was attempting to strangle and spiritually suffocate them and their work. After all, we hear in verse 18 that the Spirit was annoying them for days. And it was in response to this annoyance, annoyance that Paul, you know, quote Paul, very much annoyed, turned and said to the Spirit, I order you in the name of Jesus Christ to come out of her. And it came out that very hour. This brings us to that question for this brief Bible dive. When have I felt a power that makes it difficult for me to pray and experience the presence of God? Well, biblically, a Pythian spirit is something that does all that it can to distract, bother, and annoy us in such a way that we spiritually get off track. It does it slowly over time, but it does it relentlessly as it slowly squeezes the spiritual life and breath out of us. Just as a python wraps around a victim and slowly but relentlessly makes it harder to breathe physically. Maybe you've found it difficult. Maybe you've experienced this. We found it difficult to pray or worship or read scripture at times. And, and not even because of the normal complications and busyness of life, but, but because of something that feels just a bit more than that. Just a bit intentional. Something that's relentless and unending. Something that feels like it keeps squeezing just a little bit more on your spiritual life. As if it's really trying purposely to divert your attention from God. Well, if you've ever experienced that, I, I want to be very clear, very clear. It does not mean that you're like the slave girl who, who is possessed by a spirit. It does not mean that. But, but it might mean that you are actually under a form of spiritual attack. So if you're experiencing those types of barriers, those relentless, almost intentional barriers, this spiritual opposition, I'd encourage you, ask in the name of Jesus for the Holy Spirit to work in you, to fill you more fully and be relentless yourself. Because even though something might try to divert us away from God, all we need is the Holy Spirit to bring us back home. And if there's just a small spiritual breath left within us, and there definitely is, if we want to be closer to God, that breath is still there then we have hope that our spiritual lives can fully breathe again. And that that spiritual python, that Pythian spirit, can be fought and defeated. Thanks again for joining with me, Pastor Nick, and with beautiful Savior Lutheran Church in Bloomfield Hills, Michigan, for this brief Bible dive. If you want to learn more about our congregation, we'd encourage you to go to our website, bslcmi.org. That's bslcmi. Org. And of course, it would be great if you could subscribe to the YouTube channel, select to receive notifications, like and share this video as well. Now, go out and love God and love your neighbors.